In this video, I'm going to go over how to count significant digits, or sometimes people refer them to significant figures. I like to call them just sig figs, for example. So if you're given a decimal number, and it doesn't matter what decimal number it is, so for instance, if someone gave you something like this, you may be asked, okay, so how many significant digits does this have? And we should be able to answer that for any of these questions. For instance, if I gave you that, if I gave you this, okay, so how many of significant figures or digits do we have in these three examples? And I will tell you the rules and then I will go through these examples and then maybe we'll do a few more. So the counting rules for significant figures is the following. So if you're given a decimal number and any number that may be given to you, and it has to be a terminating decimal, meaning it's not going on forever, we are kind of linked by the following rules. So what we're doing is we're just counting each digit and asking ourselves, does that digit count for significant figures? So the first rule is rather simple. If you have a non-zero digit, non-zero digit, that means any of the following, so one, two, three, and so on, all the way up to nine, those are non-zero digits, then it is significant. So if someone gives you any number that's decimal format or whole number format, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. For instance, if someone gives us this, every digit here is non-zero. So the 2, the 7, and the 8, they're non-zero. And since they're non-zero, this would have three significant figures. So that's what the first rule says. The second rule is a little bit more complicated because it starts to ask you about, okay, well, what if the digit is a zero? So when do we count zero digits? Okay, so that's a question mark. Now, three things can happen with zero digits. Okay, so A, that's the first thing. Okay, if you have a zero digit on the left of your non-zero digit or digits, then they never count. Never count. So, so long as the zeros are on the left of the non-zero digits, they will never count. So, here are some examples, for instance. So, if I come along and I say, okay, well, here you go. These zeros are on the left of the non-zero digits. And this rule tells me that these two will not count. And of course, the two, the seven, and the eight do count from the first rule. So this would actually have three significant figures or three sig figs. So zeros on the left of non-zero digits never count. Okay, B. Now, what may happen is that you have your zero in the middle of your non-zero digits. Now, what happens if they're in the middle? Well, it turns out that they always count. Always count. So, if someone gives you an example, and let's say this is it, then you notice that, okay, I have zeros here. I have two of them, it turns out. 
they are squished between non-zeros on the left and non-zeros on the right. So they're in the middle. In the middle, they always count. So if I wanted to count how many sig figs I have here, well, non-zero digits always count, so that's three. And then I have two zeros, and they're in the middle, so they also count, so this would have five sig figs. The last rule, okay, which is C. Now, of course, what happens if the zeros are on the right? Okay, of your non-zero digits. Well, this one is a little bit annoying because they only count, only count if there is a decimal, there is a decimal in the number. And what we mean by that is, for instance, if I give you this, we know that 275 are significant digits because they're non-zero. And then I have these zeros, but these zeros are on the right-hand side of the non-zero digits. Now, do they count? Well, rule 2C tells me that they do not count because there is no decimal in this number. So this actually has three sig figs. But if you put a decimal here, so if I would copy this and it would be the, exactly the same thing. Now, of course, the number is different now, but let's say it's something like that. So I have three sig figs from the non-zero digits. And now I go, oh, hold on a second. I have a zero here, a zero here, and a zero here. Do they count? Well, are these zeros on the right-hand side? They are of the non-zero digits. And now the question is, is there a decimal somewhere in the number? It doesn't matter where this decimal is. So this decimal that we have, so this decimal could have been anywhere. It could have been here, okay? It could have been here. It doesn't matter where the decimal is. But if there is a decimal in the number, then automatically these zeros will count. So this has six sig figs regardless of where the decimal is, so long as there is a decimal in the number. So those are the rules. All right? So for instance, let me give you an example and then we'll go back to those original ones what if i gave you this annoying example let's say something like this okay you know it's going to be rare that you run into a decimal like this but so let's go through those rules so rule number one says that non-zero digits always count so i have at least four okay now i have to go through zeros on the left so I have zeros on the left here, okay? So these are zeros on the left of the non-zero digits. Do they count? The rules tell me zeros on the left never count. And it doesn't matter if there's a decimal or not, okay? Zeros on the left will never count. Now I have a zero in the middle. Well, zeros in the middle always count so i have at least one more sig fig so four plus one and then finally i have zeros on the right now zeros on the right on the right as you saw by the rule c well they only count if there is a decimal in the number so is there a decimal in the number yes there is there is a decimal in the number right there and remember it doesn't matter where that decimal is so these zeros will count. So in total, I have seven significant 
figures. 1507600, which makes it 7. So if I now scroll up those original three examples, okay, so for instance, this one, how many sig figs does this have? Well, 1, 2. Do those zeros on the right count? No, because there is no decimal in this number. So the first one here has only two sig figs. What about the second example? So here I have one, two, three, four non-zeros, and then again I have a zero. Now, does that zero count? It's on the right-hand side, but in this case, there is a decimal in the number, so it counts. So the first one had only two. This, on the other hand, will have all five. Okay, the third one, this one. Again, the one and the four will count because they're non-zero. Now, what about the zeros on the left of the non-zero digits? Do they count? Never. So this only has two sig figs. So that completes the agenda for the significant figures. Now, I will mention for anyone who's interested, sometimes, okay, when you are counting significant figures, someone may ask you about what is the estimated digit? Okay, what is the estimated digit in a decimal number? So it turns out that an estimated digit, so this is a side note, estimated digit is the last significant figure in the number. Okay, it's the last one that you count and it's the last on the right hand side. So let me show that by example. So if I go back to those first three examples, if someone asks you about the estimated digit, so in the first case, your estimated digit is eight because it's your last one that you counted. Those zeros did not count. In the second example, the estimated digit is the last zero. In the third example, the estimated digit is the four. So sometimes, yes, it is literally the last digit that you have, but like the first example shows with the 18,000, it doesn't have to always be the last digit. Okay, so for instance, this long example that we had right here, this long one, the estimated digit would be your last zero. So it is the last significant figure in the number that you count. All right, I hope you found this video useful about estimated digits and how to count significant digits. Thank you for watching.